In this video, I'm going to discuss some basic tiling and stitching. So in this case, I've taken an, uh, a preview of a slide using AI Sample Finder. Uh, usually when AI Sample Finder uh, finishes, the tiles uh, module is on. If it's not, go ahead and turn it on because we're going to need it for what we'll do next. Um, so what do I mean by tiling and stitching? So tiling is uh, means acquiring multiple images next to each other so that they cover a larger area than what's possible with a single image. And ZenBlue, this software has multiple ways of uh, generating tile objects. Uh, when you're in the navigation and tiles viewer, you can add tile objects using these buttons. So I am going to show you the first two buttons, which are the ones that you're going to use the most. So the first button um, right here allows you to add a certain grid of tiles defined by this at the position you are at right now or at positions that you mark. So for example, I can make a grid of three by three. You can also define them by size. So this is about 900 by um, 900 microns. Um, and this means that it'll be centered where I am right now. If I press this add tile region, it will add a, a graphical representation of this three by three object. And it will add this tile to this list of tile regions here. Now, if I don't like it, I can delete it either here by uh, hitting the delete, by uh, right-clicking and hitting delete, or here uh, by selecting this object and hitting the delete on the keyboard, okay? Um, you can also add objects, not necessarily where you are, uh, but where you would um, like uh, the object to be added by using this tool. When, when you have this tool, wherever you click, it will add a three by three. And if you want to add multiple three by three um, uh, tiles, you can do that by clicking here, then click a uh, keep tool, and then you can just add different ones and they can be even in different um, uh, slices. That's perfectly fine. So, um, I don't want to add that many. I'll just keep the first three. I'm going to delete the last two here. Uh, once I've added these, uh, ideally what we would want is to just um, press this start experiment button and have it do everything. So it's not quite that simple. Um, so there's one more step that you need to do before you can actually press a button and have it do everything, which is to check that the focus in each of these positions is correct. And so you can do that using this verify button. When you press here, um, it will prompt you to move to the current point. Uh, so it'll move to the center of each of these. And when you're in the center, you can go to live on whichever channel uh, would be useful for you to determine uh, if it's in the proper focal plane. And so that looks okay to me. Uh, I've, I've just been manipulating the focus with my left hand. And then I say set Z and move to next and do the same in another position. So this one was completely out of focus. So now that looks better. Set Z and move to next. And this one actually looks fine. So I'm gonna say set Z and move to next. All points have been verified. I can close this, stop that. So I know that the focus is correct on all of them. So now if I say start experiment, the software will do whatever is on this list. Now I can keep things in the list and tell the software to not do certain ones. So for example, I can say, you know what? Don't do that third one just do the first three, uh, but I will keep it for later if I need it. So I'm just gonna do that. I'll hit start experiment and you'll see that it will go and do um, you know, everything that's marked here in those uh, two tiles, each of which consists of nine locations. And as it's doing it, it aligns things based on where it thinks the stage is and it does a pretty good job of that. So this is the first one. And you can see that when it transitions to the second one, you'll now have a scene slider here uh, because that's how uh, Zeiss names um, uh, these different um, these different locations, these different tiles, it calls them a scene. So I'm gonna say follow acquisition, whoops. There we go. And so we have that one and this one, uh, which is much dimmer and where there appeared to be no uh, staining uh, 
on the other channel. So I actually don't have a good idea of what this is supposed to look like. This is just a sample that someone from the Williams lab kindly donated. Um, but so once you have this, um, one thing that you want to do is actually stitch it. So you want to take this image, which is actually nine images placed uh, next to each other and where I can't actually see the seams that well. But if you look very, very closely, you may see imperfections where two uh, of the images were adjacent to each other. And so we want to get rid of those imperfections. The way to do it is we go to processing. We use the stitching. And if it's not here in the recently used list, you can just search for it. In stitching, we're going to create a new image. So we have to tell it to use a new output. We want to fuse the tiles together. And then we have to select which of the channels will be appropriate for stitching. So we can't use, in this case, the 647, which is shown in green, or the 568, which is shown in red, because they aren't there in the other one. So this will have nothing to stitch. So we can use the DAPI in this case. Once that's all set up, you want to go here and make sure that the input is set automatically to this image, which it is. And we can say apply. When we say apply, it will uh, create, you know, it'll stitch them. And the bigger it is, the longer this will take. Um, and it will create a new file with the same name as this one, and it adds stitching. So uh, I didn't do this, but in, in your case, I would save this file with an appropriate name before you do the stitching. So then the stitching has an appropriate name as well. And if you look uh, carefully at these, you can see when you switch between them, there's a slight adjustment that happened um, in the region of the junctions. So if you look very, very closely at those junctions, you may be able to detect uh, those slight imperfections that I mentioned before. So this is one way of adding tiles to your image, but you may not want to do a certain uh, either square or rectangular tile that you have to estimate by hand. Uh, you may want instead to draw where you want to image. And so uh, you can do that. I'm going to delete all of these. Uh, using this other tiles tool. So in this case, you can just draw where you want to take a tile. And the drawing can be a rectangle, it can be an oval, or it can be a free floating region, which you press and hold to draw, and then right click at the end, or you can press and click, and this makes waypoints that then uh, get joined. And so you can see this has the advantage that it doesn't include uh, things that are outside of the shape. So it doesn't try to make it a rectangle. So I'm going to delete all of these and maybe make something a little bit, makes a little bit more sense. So let's say we want to capture this edge because those round objects are of interest to us. If we do it this way, it will sweep through it like so. And again, we want to verify uh, the focus, I'm going to do that now. That looks fine. And I'm going to say start experiment. And when I say start experiment, um, so I actually uh, made a mistake there. I didn't actually set the focus, but since it was the it was fine to begin with, uh, I think that's 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 fine. Um, but you can see, so it's you know starting kind of in a rectangular pattern, but eventually it will um, only acquire um, the the tiles as per this map, so it won't get these corners, and that'll speed things up quite a bit. Um, and once it concludes, you'll be able to stitch this, even though it is not a rectangle full of images. So we'll let it conclude, and I'll show you the results of both the imaging and the stitching. Um, right, so as so you can see, it's, it didn't go here uh, because it's following this pattern. Um, and you can combine, if you want, tiles of one kind and of the other. They will just show up in this tiles region list, and then it will do whatever is in that list. So we have this. Again, to stitch, we can go here. Um, we want stitching, new output, fuse tiles. We want to use the DAPI. If I apply it, it will stitch this together. And if you toggle between the unstitch and the stitch, you might be able to see slight um, things that the stitching fixed. Um, one note is um, this: the, the image without the stitching sometimes looks smoother. And when you go to this one, it looks uh, 
even at the same scale, it looks a little bit noisier. That's completely an artifact of the display. There is something in the Zeiss software where if you have a series of tiled images that you haven't stitched yet, it down samples them and makes it a little bit smoother uh, looking when you are visualizing them. But when you stitch them, it can't do that. And so it looks noisier, but this is actually what the data looks like. This just has some visual smoothing on it. So don't worry if, if that looks a little bit off. Um, so uh, as you can see, this tool is extraordinarily flexible and it can be combined uh, again, you know, you can combine multiple tiles. You can also combine this with Z stacks, with time series if you needed to, as well as with individual points. And the individual points is something that we'll cover in another training video.